Okay, everybody, we're almost ready to start. So Kai was uh, coming here to do a single presentation today. He's now going to do two presentations today. The coffee break in a minute. So uh, Mark down and Mark Apple. Over to you. Thank you. Well, before I start, I would like to know how many people in this room actually know what Mark down is. Please raise your hands. Okay. Who has knowingly used Markdown? Okay. Who has a really good knowledge of the rules to apply the format text? Somebody. It is just two. So, uh, okay. I was prepared that 75% of the people would already know in detail all this stuff. Then I would have skipped over the first part of my presentation. So, okay, let's carry on with Markable rather than starting with Markdown. But obviously, it makes sense to start from scratch. What is Markdown in the first place? Well, Markdown is an ordinary text file to start with. It comes with a set of very simple, or that's it looks like, a very you know, simple set of markup rules. Uh, and the uh, goal of it is to make the text readable and maintain, much more readable and maintainable than the original or the end product, the HTML file. And the, the whole idea is, of course, to convert your text file, your markdown text file, into HTML5 and probably maybe the JavaScript as well. So it's a writing form, it's not a publishing form. We shall write something in Markdown, and we are going to end up with an HTML5 The history of Markdown it was invented by John Gruber and Aaron Swartz. They came up with the idea and specified the rules. John Gruber was then in charge for implementing it as a code script. From 2005 until 2011, chaos, absolute chaos. The idea took on but uh, easily and attracted many people. Many more uh, implementations followed in all sorts of languages it's because the original uh, specification was lacking very essential features. Uh, people added features, different implementations added different features, and it was really totally clear. So they almost made the whole idea not working at all. Until in 2012, a guy invented common mark. Originally, this was called markdown, uh, but we were objective against this. He said, no, they were allowed to do this, so they made it for markdown to common mark. And the only reason why they did this, uh, they wanted to have a specification, a clear specification of all the features that made markdown work. Uh, reference, uh, implementation, and testing. That was the idea behind that. And since then, things got dramatically better. And now, uh, it's a set of features uh, which makes it not exactly a brilliant standard, but when you look at regular expressions, there are much more flavors. It's much more annoying to do with those than with the different flavors of, of markdown. And there is even an internet specification for a format text section markdown on the way, which we soon be used. So we will have sort of a standard. What is Markdown useful for? A couple of simple examples. Uh, rather than editing a readme.html, you edit a readme.md. Or you edit pages that finally become your web page. You can use it to send nicely formatted emails. You can create a presentation. You will not be surprised that this presentation will actually create it marked out. You can write one day, maybe, hopefully, an article in Vector using Markdown. And you will be able soon to create content on my server with Markdown. And finally, you should be able to edit a page on the idea wiki in Markdown in a foreseeable future.
that's just what I came up with. Uh, certainly, many more possible examples. Where's Markdown reached? The big boys. GitHub is unique. Whenever you fired a question or a comment or anything on the wiki that belongs to GitHub, you could have used, maybe you did use, Markdown without uh, knowing it. The same holds true for Stack Overflow. Whenever you ask a question or you read an answer by somebody, it was probably formatted, not probably, if it was formatted, then it was formatted in Markdown. Source for is using it, OpenStreetMap is using it, Jasper is using it, Reddit is using it, Fight is using it. Travel is using it and many, many others. And it's uh, in most wikis these days optionally available. It's a rare case that uh, it's a default when you install it, you know, but it was a great invented after the wiki were created. But almost all of the modern wiki engines offer a markdown now as an option, an alternative option to the default. <coughs> So I would like to start by showing some examples of things. I think here why Markdown is a nice approach. Uh, launching is a project available on the Epitry YouTube. It's a simple way to start up dialog API in case you have installed many versions. On my machine, as you can see, almost all versions currently supported by dialog are installed. Depending on the customer I'm working on, depending on the project I'm working on, I start up different versions. So I wrote a small utility that allows you to do that. And it comes with a kind of. Why is it opening this in edge? I'm on the wrong monitor anyway. I have no idea because my default builder is Pro. This is the, what I call it, launching user manual, as you can see, it's not exactly a big thing, it's not much. However, when you look at the source code, and this is code, right? Not only uh, it's not code, this is another user to go to code. So when you use the command in the page source, you will really see the page source for that way to the bottom. If you would be forced to maintain that document in HTML5, but you all know how that looks like. It's not easy to find to what you want to edit it and stuff like that. The alternative would be to change The markdown definition, which is this one. Is the font big enough to be read? Okay. I think it's almost immediately obvious what the uh, markup rules are. This is a header of level one, this is a header of level two. Uh, you see a specification of an image here. And the rest of this is an ordinary paragraph. So paragraph, paragraph has nothing special to it at all. This is a list definition, the sublist underneath. This is a link. And I think you get an idea why this format is much more enjoyable when you try to edit something than doing it on HTML5 straight away.
Where's my presentation? My presentation has disappeared. Yes, okay. Another example I would like to show is that you can use Markdown to form a delete. I have installed a, an extension to Chrome which allows me to use the Markdown for networking rooms inside an email. That's the, the original Markdown which comes with uh, header, a list, uh, inline APL code, a code block, some inline markup like bold, italic, and strike through, the definition of a table. And if I press Ctrl, Alt, N, and I just realized I never tried this on my laptop, You see formatted HTML file. It looks nice, I think, including the inline marker here, the link to the API wiki, the code block, the bold intelligent stuff, and the table. Vector articles. We get vector articles from orders in all sorts of forms. Some people send text files, some people send Word documents. Uh, as long as I did the job, formatted stuff, so I never actually got a ready formatted uh, vector article except from Stephen and Roger. Okay, so, but it is a way of privacy. So normally you get something that looks probably good, but you have to convert it into the vector specific HTML format. And that is quite, that can be a quite challenging task depending on the complexity of the, of the article. It might actually occasionally a wrong article that has demanding stuff in it, it might take a couple of hours to be converted into the final HTML file. Now the idea is, what if we have a CSS file which comes with the formatting you see on the web page, the vector web page for this, and an editor that is supporting this, would make uh, converting from the text of the files or word documents into the HTML file is acceptable by the workflow we have. Uh, much easier. It might even be possible to hand this over to a, a, a potential order, allowing it to find the right article in Markdown in the first place. So I put some effort into making that happen. Why is it not selecting this tab? It's the wrong one.
have chosen an article written by Drew, published, I think, uh, two issues ago, or three issues ago. That is the way the article looks like when you download the XHTML file from the Vector's website. As you can see, this is not far. Transfer this into Markdown. On the left, you see the Markdown. On the right, you see the resulting HTML file. This is done by an editor that is called, I forget, Markdown Path. So there's a professional version which was called Max or something, and an open source version. And the basic idea is that you define a special CSS file. In this case, a CSS file that is called vector.css, and that has the markup needs that allows it to display it in the same way we would look at article on the vector website, which is particularly useful for example to judge whether your code would actually make it into the printed version because your the, the space available is of course limited. On the back you get a scroll bar on the printed vector you don't see that so it's just a the maximum number of characters you get a simple line see the line. And again, when you look at the mark down, that is pretty straightforward, easy to edit. And there are, by the way, no line breaks. This is a, a single string that goes on, or, or any paragraph is a single string. There are no break, breaks inside. Uh, the lines as it is in the next HTML, otherwise you can't read it. And even the references can easily be defined in Markdown in this way. Easy to learn, which is why I think we should offer <coughs> an actual format for all of us to write articles and make it easier to publish on Victor. ADOC. Who knows what ADOC is? Okay, too few to assume that. ADOC is a format to document scripts and functions in a way that you can gain the complete documentation out of the script without uh, anything but a user command you can download from the API wiki. I would like to demonstrate that. What you are looking at is the class ADOC itself and the documentation which is included in the class. And again what you see is actually marked out. It's just that at the beginning of the line there is a comment line, comments allowed. Now when I call ADOC on itself,
do I get? Is this it has converted the leading comments in the class into an HTML file? Explaining all the possibilities to mark up code and document the classes. Originally, I was planning to look into the software which is generating this presentation. We can do this later after the coffee break. So I jump over this right now and uh, carry on with uh, what is behind the scenes. All the markdown we've seen in most of the examples were was converted by a class called Markable into HTML5. And that itself is a dialog class. I forgot something to mention, the specification. On the website commonmark.org you can download the current specification which is version 0.25. I did the original over John McFarlane, uh, who is a big guy and is really is also the Hyatt Handbook, which is a website that allows you to convert anything not anything from markdown, it was anything. It's PDF, electronic uh, books, HTML5, uh, whatever. This is the, the, the force behind the common mark specification. And this document uh, contains all the details about it. And I looked into markdown for the first time. My impression was, I think, exactly the same uh, still we had. My idea was to write a couple of regular expressions and then we are able to put the DVD to back down into HTML5. How long I was. Things are much, much more complicated when you look behind the scenes. What looks very easy and straightforward is a nightmare when you look at the details. Well, look at, look at the size of the list. It tells you something about the size of this document. How can we find out? This is not download. I mean, we can try to print it, right? So we get an idea. 114 pages. Okay, there are examples. It's not just text. There are many, many examples. Still, it is way more complex than you think. When we use Markdown, you might not even realize how complex things are because many things are straightforward. In and when you just carry on, you will never realize how, how difficult things uh, are behind the scenes. Uh, but when you try to get to, uh, to, to use all the features available, you might get a very different idea. So as it turns out, the uh, couple of regular expressions are expected to solve the problem. Well, The class is 2,380 lines. The only school is the 
people get to do. There's nothing else than that. Not the whole life, just to again. This is a documentation of Mark, Markable itself. I would like to draw your attention to a table which compares Markable with the main players of the game. Maybe I can give this a little bit smaller so you can see the whole table. Does that work? Ah, not quite. Okay, to scroll. This is the original version implemented by Mr. Gruber in Perl. This is a PHP implementation called Markdown Extra, which became very influential because they were the first guys who implemented all the features that were missing from the original stuff. For example, the original definition didn't know anything about tables. They implemented tables for the first time. Pandoc is what I already mentioned, a uh, platform where you convert or can convert Markdown into pretty much anything and Markable. Uh, for example, abbreviations introduced in HTML5, not available in HTML before version 5, were not implemented neither in standard or in extra, but they are available in Pandoc and they are also implemented in Markable. When you look further, most of the things are implemented in Markable. Some of them are not, and some never will. For example, code blocks. The original definition said that a code block is defined by four blanks or a tag character. It was an extremely bad idea because it conflicts with nested lists, which might be invented by four characters. And there you are. What is it? Is it a list or is it code? So it was a much better idea uh, to come up with what they call fencing, which means you specify three particular characters, either the or the backticks, and then everything until you hit those three characters again is defined as a good one. It doesn't matter whether it's invented or not. So that will never be implemented in Markable because it causes trouble. It's useless and causes trouble, that's all. Uh, another very bad idea in the original implementation was that when a line has two blanks at its end, it inserts a break. How are you going to see that unless you switch on show me a character instead of a blank? It's, it's, it's terrible. I implemented it anyway and the first bug report I got was about that. Somebody complained that they got a line break when there shouldn't be a line break by accidentally entering two spaces in a row. So I removed it. Markable is not doing this anymore. The concept of loose and tight lists is even difficult to explain. It just means the difference between an LE element in HTML5 as it stands is called a loose or tight list. But when you put it together, uh, the contents, when, when you put this in a paragraph, and it's not a tight list. Why would you need that? It just complicates matters enormously. So I didn't implement this either. 
HTML blocks might have or might not have markdown in itself. That simply means when you start an HTML block as a diff, for example, and then you have a couple of lines doing something else, and then uh, this HTML block ends with an end diff. But you might want a star star bold star star to be converted into something bold or not. This is not implemented yet. Maybe I'm implementing it one day. That makes sense to some extent. Everything else is implemented. And some things are implemented, as you can see down here, but are not available in the other implementations. In particular, uh, I'm talking about table of contents and sub-table of contents. We can show you what that means. This document has actually a table of contents. That's the way that would look like. And that works in Markable simply because every single header gets automatically an anchor assigned to it. So all I need to do is, if you want to have a table of contents, is building up that structure with the math element, which was introduced again in the HTML file. Not available in an earlier version of HTML file. And then when you click on that, it jumps to that particular header. While subdocs are a nice way to avoid a table of contents to become too verbose or too deeply listed. So you end up with a table of contents which takes more than one page. I think something is clearly wrong. And in this case, I've just defined that on this level, it's not part of the main table of contents, but it is part of uh, the topics as such. In this case, that means everything underneath, underneath this level will be listed in the table of contents of that subcategory. Did I make that clear? Another thing to mention is syntactical sugar. When you have stuff like the double quotes within the markdown, what? I just started. <laughs> okay, it fits. If you have double quotes within the text, a pair of double quotes, it will automatically convert this into the typographical correct. In HTML5. If you have three dots, it will convert it into a single character, which is called ellipsis. If you have three hyphens, it will automatically convert it into a count. I don't remember, n dash or n dash, one of them. It's the big one. And if it is two hyphens, then it's the slightly smaller one, which is still bigger than the hyphen. And if you have a parenthesis open, you see parenthesis closed, then you get a copyright symbol and the same for trademark. This is what I call syntactic sugar, and it's done automatically, but if you don't want that, you can suppress it by setting a particular property to zero. An important thing to mention is that you can actually assign both IDs and classes. And paragraphs, tables, headers, all sorts of things. By uh, specifying the curly brackets followed by, for example, that one, the hash will then tell Markable that it's going to be an ID. If it is a dot at the beginning of the name, it knows it's class name. And if it is neither, it will make it as an attribute into the final HTML file. You can insert page breaks. You have the lamp as a comment. There are comments in Markdown as well. But in the sense that the comment will make it into the final document, it will just don't show. But I think there's a good point in having a comment that doesn't make it into the final document. Because, for example, if I want to remind myself that there still needs to be some work done on stuff like that, that shouldn't go into the final document. 
use of the lamp symbol in, in words, not making it terms at all. Of course, this is only true unless it is, uh, if it is not signed as a, a good book, of course. And finally, you can call API functions. If the syntax is execute, execute function, and execute, execute, then that thing must be the name of a fully qualified function, and it will be called uh, and provided the right argument, which is a namespace with all sorts of parameters uh, defining this particular function. You can even specify something on the right, which will then be some sort of left argument to that function, which can be used for all sorts of things, as you will see after the other break. Okay, I think we go to the point of break. <laughs>